in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. Hi Didier, how are you? Hey Carsten, how are you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the fifth episode of the Hyper-V Amigos. Uh, today only the two of us. It was really nice with the other two guys, wasn't it? Last time. It was. <laughs> it was. And uh, we learned that uh, Aiden uh, has won the Speaker Idol session of TechEd. North oh, yes. America, but in the meantime <laughs> something happened and um, there is no TechEd anymore. Hmm. You recognize that? <laughs> I hope. I mean, I, I, I never imagined they would go to that length <laughs> to keep him from speaking. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I hope they need speakers for the big, big, big event. It's a day more. I, I think, I, I think they should, you know, car carry it over to the new event. I think, to the they, new, I think uh, they will. Uh, but uh, it was really surprising that uh, between our two showcasts, uh, Tech at uh, North America went away. So maybe Tech at Europe is the last. Tech it ever, or oh, what do you think? It it could very well be. So we will be missing history. Yeah, and I I actually was never to a tech it. That's so maybe I will okay. never be. So, but this how, how did you manage? How did you manage that? <laughs> Even miss the two ones in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let me think about it. It was quite a little bit of money, and. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I wasn't there. <laughs> but you were. Well, um, I learned every European ticket you were there, the, in this, in this century. century. This century, yes. <laughs> but you will except not for the one that no, is coming. Will not, yeah. No, <laughs> we will meet at the MVP summit, where we yes, will, where we indeed. are hoping to learn a lot of things under NDA, where we can't talk about them. But uh, I hope it will be a great time in uh, in Seattle. You booked your flight. I booked my flight. And it flights are booked. It will be in November. Uh, yes, and first week of November, and I hope to have a really packed agenda with lots of discussions, lots of learning, and of course, seeing all the, the buddies from all over the world again, which is always nice. <laughs> which is always nice. And the week after the MVP Summit, there will be a German conference uh, where I hope we both will speak. I'm looking forward to that. But, uh, yes. Which reminds me, you still have to send me the dates. I know when I fly into Berlin, I still don't know when I'm, I'm supposed to leave. Yeah. <laughs> a day after that, or a day after the day. <laughs> okay, but that, this is not the, 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 the purpose of our uh, recording now. We want to show some stuff, uh, some new stuff from Hyper-V. It's not storage spaces, it's not scale-out file server. We will come to that uh, in a later... Uh, showcast, but today we we thought we maybe show <coughs> the new generation two virtual machine. Yeah. So it's it's something new that is uh, now possible with Windows Server 2012 R2 and Windows 8.1, of course, if you have this kind of hypervisor. But did he? I learned that that there was a generation one before. I never <laughs> never know that, know that before. So well, it's, um, it's, it's like with all good things. Only when the second edition comes along, you know there was a version one. <laughs> okay. So um, maybe before we look at it, uh, what do we, what would you say? What what are the key differentiators between a, a version one uh, Hyper V VM and uh, a, a, not a version one, a generation one and a generation two uh, VM? I, I think the first thing you might notice is when you install the operating system. Yeah? It's so much faster. Yeah, you actually um, measured it, huh? I, I didn't measure it, just because I was so curious, because I still remember the first time in, I installed a gen, Generation 2 virtual machine. It's very important. It's not a Gen 2, very it's a important. Generation 2. <laughs> yes, a Generation 2 virtual machine. I... Made, made a mistake of just looking away and then looking again at the screen and seeing uh, uh, an installed operating system. And actually, my first reaction was, uh, okay, wh what went wrong? <laughs> but no, it, it just went so fast. So the, the, the numbers, very important. Uh, 
I have the mail open here somewhere. So I did on exactly the same hardware, I did an installation of a generation one virtual machine and it took uh, 345 seconds. So that's five minutes and 45 seconds. Wait, wait, that's, that's then, not really slow. For what do you, what did you install in this machine? Five minutes? I install five minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah, what do, did you install? Windows Server 2012? Windows Windows? Server 2012 R2 data center. Yeah, and this is not slow. Five minutes for that, a complete installation? Great. Yeah, and that was not scripted, so I needed to click okay. a couple of times. Everybody knows you're a very slow clicker. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's, 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 Unbelievable. it's sad, actually. <laughs> so and, and I'm getting slower, slower with age. It's, it's hard. So in the no, generation and, and then two? the generation two, 191 seconds. So that's three minutes and 11 seconds. That's 45% less. Oh, that's, that's nearly half that's the time, isn't it? Yeah, Nearly that's from that's from very fast to really very fast. Yeah, that's great. basically. Uh, so, um, why can I can a generation two virtual machine install so fast, or even much faster than a generation one virtual machine? Do you have a clue? Or, I, the or will clue, you show the, it? We can show it, but of course, we we actually got rid, or, or not we, Microsoft got rid of a lot of legacy they were dragging along. Yeah. And at a certain time, if you want to make a real advancement, you might have to say, look, this is not really relevant and necessary anymore. It's not like they are making Generation 1 virtual machines redundant. You can still, of course, install them. But for, let's say, Looking towards the future, Generation 2 will be the way to go. Okay. So we prepared some things, and uh, we look at my uh, my computer, maybe, and uh, show some okay. things about the Generation 1 and the Generation 2 virtual machine. First, uh, we will start up uh, an, an installation of an operating system in a Generation okay. 2 virtual machine. I prepared some. You don't believe me. You want to you want to test it yourself. No, okay. uh, uh, this is actually the second time we record this session because my audio was not very loud and we only heard you. So we re-recorded it. And last time, <laughs> and, and, and last time we, uh, we were thinking, where do you, where can you install a generation two virtual machine or which, which operating sh system do you can use? And For the host? The host must be the newest of course, but in yes. a virtual machine. There in a virtual are, machine? What can you install Windows. operating systems in a uh, generation two virtual machine? As, as far as I know, Windows 2008, 8.1 and 2012 and 2012 R2. Did you, did you do it with winter, Windows 2008? Uh, well, no, those are legacy operating systems. We don't install them anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I'm, <only> I'm <laughs> rightfully sorry about that. <laughs> I only know of uh, I, Windows 2012, Windows 2012 R2, and Windows 8.8 8 8 and Windows 8.1. Yeah? That's what I know, but really, and, and I mean this seriously, we, we don't do 12 and 2012 and 8 anymore. Yeah, okay. It's all 8.1 and R2. Okay. So, um, but I want to show the installation of Windows 2012, not R2, 2012. So I'm not importing a virtual machine. I say new virtual machine. And I have prepared the uh, virtual machine wizard a little bit, so I didn't have to choose so much options. So I named the machine underscore W12 generation two. And here is the location of my virtual machine where I will put it. Then at the next screen, we, we have the option to choose a generation one or a generation two. And here are some informations what generation two supports. Very important is it has to be a 64-bit operating system in the virtual machine. So we can't install 32-bit operating system well, anymore. For, server, for the servers that it supports, that's not an issue. They don't even exist in 32-bit. And Windows 8, okay, if you want to have more than 4 gigabytes of, of RAM, you also would would install a f uh, 46, 64, 64 bit machine. We, we actually only install 32 bit Windows only if we need 16 bit emulation. Okay. And we have some applications that need it, much to my dislike. Yeah. 
and that's the only times we deploy our 32-bit uh, guest operating system. Okay, because in in 64-bit operating systems there is no 16-bit emulation anymore. Or no, it's, it's not supported. Okay, so I choose the generation two virtual machine. Click on next. I give it a little bit startup memory, a gigabyte. We don't need network at, at this time. Here is, I will create a new uh, virtual hard disk, and I always tweak this value. I don't like the... 50? 30. 50 mm -hmm. is okay. It's, it's dynamic anyway, yeah, by default. Dynamic, so. Yeah. so, and I found um, Windows 2012. Oh, there is an R2 in it, yes? It is. Yeah, it's not yes. The, it's not the right machine, I guess. So I browse mm -hmm. and maybe I find some <laughs> Windows 2012. Here is. Did it. I see did I see Windows 311 there or Where do you see Windows <laughs> Windows 2000? <laughs> just it's, just it's messing with you. It's still supported, not the service pack 1 stuff, of course. <laughs> <laughs> We come to that. <laughs> so now I have a now I have a, a, a Windows 2012, and here we have the machine, and I start it. Okay, there we go. And I have to press. We don't. We will not look at the time. I only want to show that you can install Windows 2012 in a in a okay. uh, Generation 2 virtual machine. So you don't need the newest operating system, but you can uh, also go one generation back, Windows 8 and Windows uh, 2012. Okay. So while this is installing, oh, here we are. Everything is fine. Yes. Next. Just click next. Install now. Now you now you're wasting time, right? You have to click fast to make it a real good timing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, we will look at this machine later again. And okay. um, first, here I have two <coughs> virtual machines. Oh, you're going to boot them together. Uh, first, maybe we look at the hardware at the okay. settings in the virtual machine. So we have a, but we can try to boot them together and look how, how fast they are. First, we have a generation one virtual machine with 2012 R2 in it, and also a generation two virtual machine with the same operating system. And uh, we look at the hardware settings of this virtual machine. And this, I think everybody knows, who, who is doing Hyper-V knows the stuff. Yeah? So I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope too. And maybe we do a side-by-side -side comparison between the two machines, but I have to get it okay. on the screen here. You'll manage. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really know if I get it managed. So here it is. Mm, yeah, there you go. So here's the Generation 1 okay. virtual machine, and here's the Generation 2 virtual machine. And on first notice, you see here are much less options than here, or m much less hardware possibilities. You have, of course, memory. Both have memory. We need that. Both have a processor, or more of them. And we have hard disks and so on. But the first difference maybe we recognize is the BIOS here. We have a BIOS, and here we have a firmware. So yeah. why we have a firmware here and uh, BIOS in the old machine? What's, what, what is firm firmware standing for here? Is uh, we have, well, basically it's UEFI. And you... It's no, lo it's no, longer, it's no longer the BIOS, so as, we, as, as we used to know it. What is you, you, you I have always problems to, to pronounce this. U, I, E, no. <laughs> 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 and uh, I call it always Ufi, 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 Ufi. Just, just, just spell it out. If you spell it out, it's, it's, it's correct. I think U. I, I will write e it F I. U E F I. That's correct. Yeah. U E F. Yes. If, if you just spell it out, then, yeah. then you have it. And, and basically, it stands for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. And that sounds and quite new. I, well, well, we I. It's quite new for people to use it, I think, uh, but 
we've been talking about it a lot longer than we've actually been using it yeah. for real. Uh, I started using it by default ever since Windows Server 2012. So basically all my deployments uh, on with Windows Server 2012 and 2012 R2, the hosts, yeah. or, the, or, or even some small number of uh, physical machines we still have, are now UEFI. Okay, so, you, so I, 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 do you have yes, to have the cool, hardware great. support? The hardware has to yes, support yes, you, you have to, yeah, EFI? Yes, you, yeah, you have to upgrade your BIOS because in, in some of the older models, it's a bit of a hybrid model, it seems. Mm. Uh, no, but of course, quite old. If, Generation if, 2 of Dell, you have those. Uh, uh, also, you have the possibility to use the BIOS mode and the UEFI yeah. mode. Yeah, and there, there were some issues with the early versions that you needed to do some funky stuff. I have a nice blog post about that, uh, actually, how to make it work in the older uh, generation uh, with Windows Server 2012. But those issues have all been resolved, and you don't need to do that anymore. It just works out of the box nowadays. Okay. And some people ask me, why do you do it? Basically, it's not like we really, 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 really needed it. But we were like, look, we can experiment a bit with this, but it's never going to give us the experience you have from running it in production. And I must say, until now, it has not caused us any issue. Yeah. Uh, we once thought it might cause us an issue when we had to load unsigned uh, drivers uh, that we got from Microsoft for testing mm -hmm. a bug fix. But uh, as it turned out, we did not even have to disable secure boot to to work with those. Okay. So uh, it, it the experience on a whole was was we don't we don't see the drawback, and we do see the benefits going ahead for security. Yeah, and it's a so new way for the for the hardware to to uh, talk with the load drivers, boot the boot the computer, and so on. Yeah. yeah, but I but I do think that on a physical server, most people will be disappointed if they think about it's going to boot faster. No, <laughs> there is so much hardware enumeration and checks going on uh, that <laughs> doesn't know. it doesn't materialize on physical machines at the moment. Yeah. Perhaps it will in the future, but at the moment, I don't see it. Yeah, there's a lot of mixed mode, and uh, if you watch yeah. the, boot, uh, uh, the boot procedure, there are so many drivers loaded and. Uh, there's also BIOS, I think, from the hardware cards like the ZAS controllers or the network cards, uh, even or the BIOS HBAs, yeah. 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 and the, the DRAC cards or the ELOs or yeah. whatever. It, yeah. it all takes time. But you said a nice thing about UEFI, uh, the secure boot thing, and this is one that uh, the new generation two virtual machine supports. So yes, it does. We can enable secure boot, and uh, when we enable it, uh, it will will search for a certificate in all the things that is loading i i guess yeah. and uh, so if you have mi a microsoft operating system they are assigned with a microsoft certificate and so you are sure that this driver this is this is a bootloader is not modified by some stupid or some software malware uh, software and you you get some things running on your computer you don't want yeah. so it's secure boot is secure it's more secure yeah. it's more it's not secure it's more secure okay that's this is one of the advantages uh, we have now a firmware and uh, in the old machine we have a bios we have of course um a boot order we can modify the boot order in both systems and uh, what are they the other differentiators oh whilst you are looking at the boot order you see the network adapter in there on yes. the generation 2 virtual machine yeah. and one of the of the enhancement is if you wanted to do pixie boot on a generation 1 virtual machine you you had to use the legacy network adapter yeah and basically that was annoying because you don't really want to keep using that. You want to go for the for the for the an enlightened uh, network adapter with, okay. <laughs> that has that has that has knowledge about uh, the the guest services and, and such. But that that made that made deployment of of uh, a VDI solution, for example, if you were using a, a Pixie Boot, or if you deploy your servers using a Pixie Boot and you want to do that in your virtual environment, that was a bit annoying. Yeah. It was a lot of extra work uh, to get to just to use it, and now that's gone. And basically, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, <laughs> that it's the, gone. 
The most annoying thing is that the legacy network adapter only supports 100 megabits of speed. And this is because yeah. this adapter is a, a very... Uh, Hyper-V emulates a very old Intel adapter, the 21140, a four-port adapter. And um, this is not very fast. And in the Generation 2, they get they got completely rid of the um, legacy network adapter. There is no legacy network adapter anymore and we can see that when we uh, want to add hardware there is only the network adapter and when we yeah. click here at hardware we have the network adapter, the, the nice one, the fast one and we have the legacy network adapter in the generation one virtual machine. Yeah. So, so the 100 megabits indeed was also a limitation of that one. Some people will miss it for that reason. They used it as a very easy cross. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it uses quite a lot of resources, a leg legacy network adapter, because it's, yeah. it's emulated in the user mode. So it, it uses a lot of resources. So when we look here at the hardware we can add, maybe we see another difference. Oh yes, I we are missing... <laughs> yeah, we are missing it. Yeah. yeah. There is no remote FX 3D video adapter support in the moment in the Generation 2 machine. And we will see why that isn't there in the moment. We will see it okay. later when we start up our machine. So other things we recognize. In a Generation 1 virtual machine, we have two EDE controllers. And this is yes. quite also an old concept, an old hardware concept. This is maybe, is, was it then in the, the 80s or in the 90s? I think in the 80s maybe. In the 80s, in yeah. the 80s I think, yeah. And uh, our virtual machine has to boot from a hard disk that is connected to an EDE controller. Yes, that's true. In a generation true. one. Yeah. In a yeah. generation two, there is no EDA controller anymore. And so basically, you can edit. boot from SCSI. Yeah. yeah, that's the consequence. <laughs> We have to boot our machine, we have a SCSI controller, so we can now boot from SCSI. With a lot of nice advantages, like extending and shrinking the boot partition while it yep. is running. That's a nice advantage. The you can have larger disks. You can have larger disks, yeah. Other advantages? It's, it's, it's a little bit not so resource intensive the SCSI controller, like the EDE controller, they are quite similar fast, I would say, in the new for implementation. Per for performance, they're great. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is gone. Also gone is the COM ports. The COM ports. And the disk yes. dr dis diskette drive? The diskette did drive? This drive. I, 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 I really want to know, did you, except for testing did you ever use it on a virtual machine i know that some deployments uh, get their unattended file over the disk oh yes if you deploy nt4 <laughs> <laughs> no i'm i'm not really sure but i think uh, the virtual machine manager also sometimes use the disk drive to 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 insert and, and or to 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 uh, give the machine an unintended file but I'm not quite okay. sure in the moment. So with the I, Generation I, I, 2, I, I, it, it yeah. uses a DVD, but uh, in the Generation 1, I think it uses a disk drive. But I'm not quite yep. sure. Uh, okay. But in real life, I don't use it. <laughs> have you, when have you used it the last time? Just, just to, I, do, I only use it for experimenting. If, if, let's say, if you, want to, if you wanted to have a file available and you didn't want to put it in an ISO, yet you might have it in the, in, the, in, the, in the DVD, you could put it in a, in a virtual floppy format file and, and, and oh. mount that. How you could you, just... How do you get a virtual floppy file? Oh, you have to create <laughs> I don't know. gadgets and tools to create those. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. But that's one. not, that's not a problem. You, you can, you can just create them with little tools, like you can create an ISO. It's, it's all fun for for nerds and geeks. But in real life, yeah. I, 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 can't say that I've ever missed uh, a virtual floppy. Okay, so it's. But that's just me. Not. Your, your, your mileage may vary, and if you have a need for uh, a virtual diskette drive, virtual machines, generation two virtual machines are not for you. Yeah. Also, the COM ports are gone, and they are they are gone. But there is a workaround if you need them, because basically, let's face it, uh, they're named pipes, right? They're named pipes, and uh, yeah. there is a, 
sometimes a misunderstanding. These are not the serial ports of, of the servers. Most servers today don't have any serial ports anymore. And if they have, they have m mostly only one. So <laughs> this is yeah. not the serial port of the server. This is a name pipe, and you can do nice things with it. But uh, Serial ports are great things. They still survive because you need them for all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But even with, with networking, uh, modern switches don't have a serial port anymore. They have an Ethernet port with a, with a converter from an Ethernet port to, to a COM port. Yeah. And then on your laptop, you have a USB converter to a COM port. And those two converters meet in the middle. <laughs> but none of the devices actually has a real COM port anymore, yeah. which is quite funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, these are the things that are missing when we look at the hardware of the virtual machine, what we can do in the hardware settings. But Okay. We will look in the machine when it's running. So I try to start both of them at the same time. So where is my Hyper-V? I don't need that. Where is my Hyper-V manager? Here it is. Okay. First we have to open them. Otherwise we don't. Uh, for our viewers, technically you can start them without connecting to them. Yes, of course. But we want to see it, huh? <laughs> So it's a little bit hard with this resolution to do something, really. So I will start them both. Yes, there we go. Okay, one, two. <laughs> DD is counting, so I will put them here. Maybe we see a difference. So here, what? Oh, it's this is hey. this is here. There we go. And this is also here. So yes. it boots, both machines boot faster. very fast. We can yes, say absolutely. they boot very fast, but the generation yeah. two was even faster. <coughs> and I heard numbers, I don't know if we can uh, prove them, but I know 30% faster. That so could very well be. Basically, they both boot so fast that it's not my major concern that I need to worry about. Yeah, I, I think this so. is not really uh, a reason to go to generation two because of the fast boot. I don't think so. This is something we will talk on. Uh, we will talk about this in another show. This is uh, the remote enhanced remote desktop. No, re enhanced yeah. remote session mode, something like yeah. that. We will talk about that later. Also a great thing, but it's not the focus of our show today. So I will log on into the machines, and I hope I know the password. <laughs> Isn't it administrator? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> no, I, I always take these eight uh, round bubbles. So now you know. Okay. You have a lot of media players in there. Yeah. Are you, have you been playing with Remote FX, by the way? I have been playing with Remote FX in some customer projects, yeah. Okay, nice. It's great, yeah. So, here are both machines, and we want to look at the device manager. Oh, by the way, did yeah. you see how nifty that was? Right click on the uh, start yes, button. Yes, another great mm. thing. We will, we will do it again, in the <laughs> generation one machine. First, I have to. This is the normal view, you know. Uh, the yeah. the devices are ordered by the type. So we have our disk drives here. We have our network adapters and so on. But what we want to show, we need another ordering. So we want to have the device by connection. And we change that. And I will do that in the generation one. You said right click to the start button. It's called start button, right? Yeah? Yes, yes. <laughs> and we <laughs> we here we have a nice a nice collection of very useful tools, I would say. Yeah. And I will start the device manager here in this virtual machine also, I change the device by connection. So here's our generation one, here's our generation two. At first we don't see any difference, do we? No, we don't. It's all no, the same. It looks very looks very pretty normal, normal, nice. Yeah. yeah. So when we open the ACPI X64 based PC, I do that here. 
We have the Microsoft ACPI compliant system. That's very nice. And I do the same in the Generation 2 machine. And here we see some differences. We have okay. in the Generation 1 machine, we have a PCI bus. And in the Generation 2 machine, we, we haven't. It's gone. This is the reason why we have no remote FX hardware support for the virtual machine uh -huh. generation 2 virtual machine at the moment because this this uh, support this this graphic card is uh, actually connected to the PCI bus and that's, this is not there anymore so I will open the PCI bus and when we do that we see some nice Intel how you say emulations or Intel yes. Intel chips Emulate old uh, emulated Intel hardware yeah. yeah and here we see this first one uh, when I saw this demonstration the first time I was quite surprised that to read an PCI to ISA bridge and this is something of the of my old computer days when I started mm -hmm. the ISA bus was quite popular and uh, I think you know it also it's it was uh, this 8-bit bus yeah the but ESA uh, if bus, you, not if the ISA, the if, ESA. yeah if you think when when the first virtual uh let's say hypervisors were made or the first uh, the first attempts at at uh, starting to emulate hardware it, it made sense it it uh, i think it had has not so much to do with the first hypervisor but with the operating system that has to oh, run yeah. in the hypervisor this operating yeah. system needs to find hardware that it knows and if we look when if we open this ISA bridge we see here all the good stuff yeah. is connected PS2. to the ISA to the ISA bus so we have these are things market. you don't find in, in your hardware anymore today <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> but your hardware is not capable of running ms dos or maybe nt3 dot five or windows for workgroups 311 or so but the virtual yeah. machine actually is because of that so you can run very old operating systems in this generation one virtual machine yeah? so when we look in the generation two virtual machine there is no pci bus we have only the acpi module device and when we open that there is only the microsoft hyper-v virtual machine bus and when we open this one we see there only we Microsoft Hyper-V stuff. Yeah. So our over the virtual machine bus, all over the virtual machine yeah. bus. And the virtual machine bus is uh, in memory communication between the management operating system and a virtual machine. So a very fast in memory communication. And we have the virtual machine bus also here in the generation one machine. And there are also our drivers. But here we have only this driver so this is yeah. maybe the reason that generation 2 needs a quite modern operating system because this hardware has to be supported in the operating system there is no I like, I, yeah actually even read that certain very old software running in a generation 2 virtual machine shows lesser performance because yeah. it expects certain legacy hardware to be Present and available. Yeah, I, I've I, heard. I've heard. Yeah, I heard it too. Uh, you you mean yeah. uh, like Fox Pro a database? I think I think I think one one of the examples was Fox Pro. So there are some very older older legacy applications yeah. that you might want to test if you want to use a generation two virtual machine, whether you'll get the same performance as you are used to, yeah. and that might also be a reason not to use them. Yeah. So this is this is quite a difference between the two machines. And um, we talked about what operating systems can run in the Generation 2 machine. We, we said Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 and Windows 2012 and Windows 2012 R2. And of course, the coming Microsoft Next. operating systems will also support, I assume, Generation 2. If you have an older operating system, you can still run it in a Generation 1. And I, I think uh, the Generation 1 machine will not or will be there for a very, very long time. Because Windows 7 does not run in a Generation 2 virtual machine. Still a lot of Windows 2008 R2. Exactly. And basically, the entire install base 
what's what's the what, what's the return on investment of taking your thousand VMs and uh, transforming transforming them to generation two VM? What what's the real benefit there? Just oh, just for they're bragging. Booting, they're booting faster, thirty percent. Yes, but but, but is, but is, but is that booted. your biggest? No. Is that your biggest problem? No, you don't boot server so yeah. much time in virtualization. Yeah. It's it should be forty so, twenty four by seven. So. They so install we look, very we, fast, we, but they are already installed. Yeah. That's not quite and, a, and, an advantage. And if you don't if you don't have an immediate advantage, uh, a real economic benefit of doing so, why would you? So I think I think most virtual machines that have started out as generation one virtual machine will serve out their purpose as a generation one virtual yeah. machine only unless you have a real good reason uh, to switch them over. Yeah. But the question is, can you switch them over? Yes, you can. You there can. is a script available to do that. There is a script. By John Howard, one of the, the PMs at the, the Hyper-V team yeah. in Microsoft. He's got a, a real nice uh, blog post series on the Generation 2 virtual machines. Yeah. And he's the author of a script that actually does the transformation for you. And he has a nice, uh, he had a nice, I think, I don't know, I think the blog post has been replaced by... Uh, a Wikipedia or a, a download page, I, I'm not sure. I, we will uh, put that in, in, in yeah. the show notes. And uh, yeah. I, I think it was 10, I'll, ten I'll, posts about the generation. Yeah, at least. At, hang on, I'm going to try and, and look it up. Yeah, 10 posts he's yeah. got. And the utility for converting uh, generation one is, is part 10, actually. Okay. Yeah. But you have to remember... You can't convert, yes, you can actually convert a Windows 7 virtual machine uh, from a Generation 1 to a Generation 2, but it will not run. So yeah. your yeah. so operating system has to support Generation 2 yeah. drivers. And also note that if you have a mixed environment, let's say you have Windows Server 2012 and 2012 R2 and, and not R2 uh, in your environment, and if you have a virtual machine port uh, mobility within the data center, yeah, uh, you can't run a Generation 2 virtual machine on a Windows 2012 host. So that's also something to consider. Quite important, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So um, we can convert them. Uh, we will add the, the blog post about it. Um, basically, basically, Carsten, I'm sorry. Now that I think of it, that would give a problem anyway. What will, will just give a problem anyway? It's it's if you if you move a, if you move a virtual machine between generations from 2012 R2 to 2012, it's not as transparent as it should be. It's only going up that you can do it easily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. that's not yeah. quite the problem, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's not that's 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 actually uh, uh, that was theoretical. It, <laughs> that was <it's>, theoretical. Uh, <laughs> but you can shut it down and start it on a, uh, 2012. Can you? The have you do, have yes, you? I've done it. You, the live migration mm. is only possible in one way, but you can turn the machine off or shut it down and start it on a Windows uh, 2012 because everything is, is, is okay. Oh, are, are you sure about that? I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not giving my, my hands for it, but I'm quite sure. We can try I, it. I think, I think there is even a knowledge base article that it doesn't work. If you shut it down and start it on a 2012 machine, I'm quite sure, and I'm actually sure I've done it. Okay. Yeah, but because we'll last time I okay, we'll 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 we'll. Uh, Not a generation two, we'll of course, but a generation one VM. Okay. Are we talking generation two or generation one? I'm talking generation one. There is there, there is something about exports also don't work. You can't you can't export a, a, a VM running on Windows 2012 R2 and import it on 2012. That's possible. It will fail. That's possible. I think that there's even a knowledge base article about that. Okay. So we will talk. We will. Uh, we will um, look. We will look at that and uh, give the information the next showcast. If yeah, good if idea. I was stupid, or uh, if I dreamed not that stupid. I've done it, or uh, I th I'm actually well. Quite sure well, you you it. can get it to work. That's not a problem. But you, it's it, it's you have to create a new virtual machine. I think. Yeah, but but let us uh, come back to the generation two yeah. virtual machine. So Let's in the it. moment there are not so many reasons to really get fancy about generation two. It's it installs faster. Okay, that's a one-time job. The startup is faster, but how 
in reality, how, how often do you start up uh, servers? With clients, maybe if you do VDI, maybe that's something to consider, uh, but uh, with servers, not really. You lose uh, um, the possibility of the remote FX hardware support in your virtual machine. So yeah. I think it's, it's a new version Microsoft put it out so we can try it, we can use it, and I hope that in the next and other operating systems they will bring new features to the generation too. Well, well I, think, I think there are some real, real use cases for it. Let's okay. say if you want to do Pixie Boot. Oh, yeah. I forgot. That's a good one, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I also think that if you are in, a, in an environment where security is very important and secure somebody boot. has mandated that you have to have Secure Boot, now you can. Yeah. Right. So, so there are there are some use cases, but in in general, let's say for your for your standard uh, business, perhaps not yet. But uh, but I'm, I I'm I wouldn't say that there are that it's not that useful yet. I, it really depends on the use case. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, you said something very important. You said secure boot, and that reminds me of one question: Is it only possible to uh, to run? Windows operating systems in a generation two VM. What was with, with our friends with the Penguin? Uh, I think in theory it's quite possible to run any operating system in a generation two virtual machine as long as you have this, as long as it's signed. Oh, you don't. It, it, it has not to be signed. You can turn off Secure Boot. Yes, but yeah, okay. But if you want Secure Boot, I mean. If you want secure boot, you're of course yeah, you're right. Yeah. But I prepared something here. We have a nice Ubuntu 14.04 LTS machine here. We yeah. look at the settings. You see firmware. Okay. And we have secure boot enabled. So if I start this machine. It should not work. <laughs> nope. Because in the moment boot failed. In the moment, um, the I think the boot system of Ubuntu is not signed with a Microsoft certificate. Yeah. So I will turn it off. And I change from secure boot. I disable secure boot. Yep. Yeah. Of course, it's not so fast as Windows, <laughs> but it should at least boot. <laughs> so, please show show us something. There is no error, at least. At least <laughs> prove that you can boot. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. So, actually, with the newest uh, Linux kernel and the newest uh, driver support, you can you can put Linux in a generation 2 VM. And th with that, you get the fast, maybe Pixie Boot. I think it's possible also with, uh, with Linux, Linux, I guess. And you get SCSI support for all your drives. And with SCSI support, you have the possibility to um, extend your drive and shrink your drive while it's running. It's also supported with Linux, with a new... Uh, uh, LIS, so the Linux integration services. Yeah. So mm. we have to wait a little bit about this. Uh, oh, there, there we are. Oh, what's that? <laughs> I have something. It's a standard Ub Ubuntu installation. It's not so fast on my system, but you see, it works in a generation two virtual machine. Okay. Cool. Didi, I think we covered everything but the installation of the Windows. Windows, uh, here it is, Windows 2012 machine. Okay, and there you go. I want to have a license key. And here, uh, <laughs> I don't can, did I you, can't did, enter did, a license key here. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Don't you, need to, don't you need to enter the license key before the installation can continue? <laughs> yes, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we will not see that because I can't enter in license. Why can't you enter it? You just 
copy it and use clipboard to type it in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I have no uh, at hand now. So, oh. I think um, that covers everything we want to show about the Generation 2 virtual machine. Yeah, most of the things. I, I think I, I think it's really important that we put in the, the link to John Howard's 10-part ten, ten series about it. There's all kinds of very interesting stuff. Also, if you want to do uh, kernel mode debugging, how you set up the, the COM ports for that okay. with the name pipes, because you you need to do something extra that you didn't... Yeah, because uh, there are no COM ports anymore, so... Well, they're, they're, actually, I think they're still there. You just don't see them. And he's got that explained on his blog post. How you do it? How you how you find them and set them to name pipe and PowerShell so you can actually attach your debugger and such. So it's a, it's a really 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 interesting series. And if you if you are in, interested in using generation two or learning about it, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a good place to go. Also, I have a I have heard a lot of people using or playing with the with the uh, PowerShell converting script. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be working just fine. Okay. There's actually one guy in England who told me they converted all their virtual machines using that script without an issue. Oh, that's cool. Of course, before you do that, kids, at home, test it with your applications and your, <laughs> <laughs> your environment that this is really what you want. But if you are on Hyper-V 2012 R2, there is yes. a nice uh, export while running. Or, and you can export a machine and test it in a private environment yeah. that's a nice feature yeah. i guess okay yeah. didier i think that covered now it covered everything we want to talk about the generation 2 vm don't be afraid the generation 1 vm will be there for a long long time at least oh, absolutely at least as long as windows 7 or windows 2012 r2 uh, is Are supported support. and this is for i think six more years or so I think I think it will be I a think decade be at least. Yeah, it will be long. I think so, it will be a decade at least. So yeah. It's a new opportunity, a new a new generation of uh, of the virtual machine. But you have have not to be afraid about uh, losing the generation one VM. Huh? Okay, Didier. Yeah. Thank you very much for this nice interview. I hope this time it goes. It 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 it, <laughs> it has done work. I, we have sound at least, and we will see. Yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. Very well.